to see thee more clearly. Love thee more clearly. Follow thee more nearly. Follow thee more nearly. Dearly beloved in Christ, we give God all the praise and adoration for this morning's service. You are welcome to the house of the Lord. Graceland PIWC is your place that you should be calling home. I want to thank the pastor, the wife, the presider and his wife, the marriage committee, leadership team, and their spouses, and all of you as leaders and congregants for this unique opportunity offered us to be part of your service this morning. And in this second service, we're looking at a completely different subject from what we did in the first, but it will still speak to the issues of marriage, family life, and relationships. And I see that this session is dominated by younger people. And for me, this is heartwarming. You know why? Because they're going to build on the right foundations. Hallelujah. Tell yourself, I will not suffer the negatives of my father. I will not suffer the negatives of my mother. I will not allow my parents' negativity to become a pattern in my life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, I asked them to show a video there's a video that the Chinese have tried to explain why we wear the marriage ring on this finger, the fourth finger. And if you can do the gestures that he's doing, try, try it as you said. Just follow them and let's see. Can you start? Please start for us so that they can see. You first do your hand like this. Hold both together this way in front of you. So please start. All right. Okay. We're only seeing half of his hands. Where is the other half? <laughs> we should be able to see both hands. Represents your life partner, and the little finger represents your children. Firstly, open your palms face to face. Okay, so follow. Open your palms. Back to back. Secondly, open and hold the remaining three fingers and the thumb. Try to separate your thumbs, which represent the parents. They will open because your parents are not destined to live with you for the rest of your lives. They will leave you sooner or later. Join your thumbs as before and separate your index fingers which representing siblings. They will also open, because your brothers and sisters will have their own families and will have to lead their own separate lives. Now join the index fingers and separate your little fingers which representing your children. They will open too, because the children will grow up, get married and settle down on their own someday. Finally, join your little fingers, and try to separate your ring fingers which representing your spouse. You will be surprised to see that you just cannot separate them, because husband and wife are meant to be together all their lives, through thick and thin. This is a simple explanation that Jap Chinese have. No, we won't watch this one. Just the first one is enough for the second service. Now, he has explained that the marriage comes with other people, your parents, your siblings, hopefully your children. Now, none of them are meant to be in your life all the time. But there is one who is meant to be in your life all the time. And that becomes the friend that sticks closer than a brother. First, in the person of Jesus Christ, second, in the person of your spouse. Now, those of you here, majority of you look young, looks may be deceptive, but I check with pastor, and my understanding is that close to about 85% would be young people. And that, for me, is very glad for me to see that this is going to be the foundation, and that you're going to build it right 
like in Matthew 7 when we read about Jesus talking about two builders. He said one built in sand, the other built on a rock. He says the rains fell, the wind blew, and the storms came. One stood, the other collapsed. That's where we get the song, Me see me done, war boat and do, metal me bo, messy no ye, na me ni, Jesus bet na, me see me done, war boat and do, o suri twa, ming suro, e hom ritua, ma ko mentu, Messi me dan wobo nanedo na me de Jesus that now when I was young I used to attend marriage seminars and whenever I got there they say oh when you go 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 and I'll tell her oh I want to listen I want to, I want to learn I want to understand I had no idea I would be speaking about marriages and all these things. So, as young people, you must make a commitment to chastity. It's so important for you. At the age of 10, I took a pledge to stay as a virgin until I married. So, when I was 30 and I was getting married, I was still a virgin. It doesn't mean if you're a virgin, you're a perfect person. No. There is virginity and there is chastity. That's why I want you to choose chastity. Because a person who lives chastely won't struggle with virginity as an issue. Today, in your generation, people don't have any regard for chastity. The things people do are horrible. How many of you hope one day you marry? Those of you here. One day you marry. Let me see your hand. One day. I didn't say tomorrow. I said one day. Hey, Graceland, then we have a huge work on our hand. <laughs> If majority of the young people have their hands down, then we, don't we have an issue? <laughs> well, Dave Willis says, and I quote, a husband and wife must function like two wings of the same bird. They must work together or the marriage will never get off the ground. Or the marriage will not get off the ground. Are you, are you following my slides? It seems to show you something different. Well, this session, we're speaking to the subject, your marriage must work. Let's say it together. Look at somebody and say, your marriage must work. You know, some of us may have seen fathers not being responsible. Some of us may not have seen our fathers before. Some of us, our mothers abandoned us. As a deputy director for 16 years, I have encountered different, different young people. Some of them, we have had to raise support for them to go to school, uh, to find a trade, or go to get a job. And some of them have never seen their father before. And for one particular case, uh, she's still in my life and in my family's life. I had gone to a shop to do photocopy those days. They had these comm centers. And so I went to the comm center and I saw this young lady eating with the older man from the same bowl. And I was like, hey. So I waited when they finished eating the man went out and then the girl came she was in charge of the comm center so she comes to me you want to do something i said i want to do photocopy so she does the photocopies for me they were quite a, a bulky document those days were when we were doing those trainings for the youth workers so i'd gone there to run one of those usual photocopies and then i asked her is that your father he said no 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 he's not my father he's my boss and i said how can you be eating with your boss in the same plate I said, ah, he, Two weeks now, he says I should be eating with him. So I asked her, has he told you he loves you? She said, yes. I said, Yehovah. So the man is actually sowing seeds. So as she is eating and he is eating, he is transmitting energy into her eyes, into her heart, into her soul, into her head, and into her feelings. So it will get to a point, it will get to saturation point. And now he can begin to pluck the fruits that he has sown for a very long time. So I asked her, do you go to church? He says, I go to church. Where? Pentecost. Instantly, I said, God, 
I have a responsibility. I said, what about your mother? Yes, my mother too is a deaconess. I say, yeah, this one, the Miami Dim. This must not continue. This one must end. So later I discovered that the girl's mother, she had finished uh, sec secondary school and she was supposed to go to university and the mother had gone for one million cities loan from this man. And the arrangement is that the girl should come and work with him so that they will clear the cost of the one million. Those days, Legon Forms was one million, if you don't know. One million Ghana cities. So when you, 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 you hear 100 cities, 50 cities, so you won't see it. But those days, they, they mention it in millions. Even SIM card. <laughs> SIM card. Nipa Todoma was as his SIM card, ordinary SIM card, which now is one CD. Those days, how much were they selling? Ariba, I remember Ariba. You go and kill, you won't even get. <laughs> Mobitel. <laughs> Kasa, 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 is it Kasa Power or whatever? Hey, Konko, Konko. And then I said to her, we want you to stop this work. And I will speak to people who have money that I know. So I went to my local church. I spoke with two gentlemen who are business people. And I said, I have this young lady. I want us to rescue her. This is a rescue mission. I want us to pay one million Ghana cities. I mean, cities at that time. There was no Ghana in addition, one million cities, to her mother so that we can take her from the place as she prepares for university. And by the grace of God, we paid it. These two men paid. And then later I got a third one to add and they made a commitment to take care of her through university. But they told me, we don't want you to let her see us. So you will get the bills and then we will pay and then she gets the receipts. And that's how those young girl finished university. Today she's a very good photographer and she's doing wonderful for the Lord. People take her to Turkey to take pictures, take her to all kinds of places to take pictures. But when I sit back and I remember the day I met her in the comm center. So you two, you are sitting here. I pray that God should send a kinsman redeemer into your life. And let this message be a kinsman redeemer that will not allow you to waste your youth. Because youth, you are youth only once in your lifetime. When you waste it, too bad. Too bad. And when it comes to marriage, there are four things I want to focus on today. First, I want you to understand that good marriages are possible. It is possible to have a good marriage. As young people, when you grow, it is possible to have a good marriage. Number two, I want to focus on five things that are destroying marriages today. Five things, very, very important things. There are five critical things. I had a privilege of going to safari in Kenya. And in safari, they tell you that the animals called the big five. In the middle there are the big five. The rhinoceros, the buffalo, the the elephant, the lion, and the tiger. These are the five daring animals. And when you do a safari and you don't see these animals, any one of them, you have wasted your money. I had to spend a night in the Kruger National Park in uh, South Africa, and there too they told me, you have to see this, one of these five. And so in the middle of the night, we go on a night trail and you see them. It's amazing. But there are five things I have seen over the period, I counsel different, different people, singles, couples, and 25 cases in a week. That's my routine. <laughs> and I will share with you five things that I have seen destroying marriages, and you must pray against them. The third thing is, I'm going to show you a pattern that works from Scripture. And finally, I will make a definition of a spouse, a husband, and wife. I start with the story of this young one. A wife wanted to reach her husband on his mobile phone, but discovered that she was out of credit. She instructed her son to use his own phone to pass across an urgent message to his daddy who was on site. After Junior called, he got back to mommy to inform her that 
a lady picked up daddy's phone. The three times she tried reaching dad on his mobile phone. She waited impatiently for her husband to return from work. And upon seeing him in the driveway, she rushed out and gave him a tight slap. Boom! Then she slapped him again for a good measure. This story was sent to me by my wife. Knowing that I speak in public, she said this would be a very good story to start anything. People from the neighborhood rushed to find out what the cause of the commotion was. And the woman asked Junior, Junior, tell everybody what the lady said to you. And Junior said, and I quote, the subscriber you have dialed is not available at the moment. Please try again later. Now, can you imagine, what is it that informed the woman's decision not to even hear what was said to the boy? And yet, she drew her own conclusions. There are so many individuals who operate on assumptions. They assume they know. They assume they understand. They think that I know what has happened. Some can even look at you and say that I know what you're thinking. Before the lockdown, my wife and I had the privilege to go and speak to 18 couples from 18 countries in Rwanda. It was our first international couples invitation. And I thank God we managed to go. And there's something that struck me. Now, each one of you as young people should pay attention to this. I said to the people in the meeting, no human being is born to be a mind reader. None of us here. The moment you start reading people's mind, you are practicing witchcrafts. You are practicing what is called necromancy. Because we are not designed to read people's mind. So people have to verbalize what is in their head. Unfortunately, there are people who second guess people. I know what you're thinking. No, you can't know what I'm thinking. Because my, my thoughts are not what you're thinking. And that is why communication is very, very difficult. Because sometimes what you said is not what was heard. And what was understood is not what you meant. It means communication has gone haywire. Five things that are destroying marriages today that you as young people and as married individuals never ever allow to come into your life. Number one is called secularism. I know that Apostle Kodia is here. He's my godfather. He was my district pastor many, many years ago um, when he was a district pastor in Tema. And um, I work very closely with him. And so many people think he's my father because we look alike somehow. If you saw his son, Kerry, here, you would think he's my direct brother. And he teaches a lot about this concept of secularism. So I won't spend a lot of time knowing that I'm in Teshinungwa area. But the concept of secularism simply is this. You take God out of the picture and put human beings at the center. Today, that is what your world has. Me, I, and myself. No, you don't own yourself. Paul says you have been sold and you have been bought at a price. He says, honor God in your body and in your spirit. Every time you are honoring God, you should be both in your body and in your spirit. Stop saying that. No. So your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Tell yourself, my body is God's temple. Secondly, tell yourself, my body is not anybody's playground. And especially if you're a girl, I have two daughters, I've been telling them, your body is not a playground for boys. Some boys want an amusement park and they think a certain girl's body is a place to go and have fun. He says, Bobium. Secularism. Don't take God out of your life. Keep God at the center. So that anybody who wants to marry you in the future, they must love God. They must be chasing after God. They must be longing for the spirit of God. There are people who are young and they are connecting with people. Who be saying, oh, 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 oh. Is, he, is he born again? No, but he, he goes to church small, small. It's not about small, small matter. 
You don't want somebody, when you are quoting from scripture, he's quoting from another book. You want somebody who calls upon your father as his father. He can say, Abba, Father, just like you. He can submit to the Holy Spirit. And when you read the scripture, he or she also reads the scripture. Not somebody who says, yeah, the Bible, but don't change. That's danger. Are you here, young people? Number two, selfishness. Selfishness. Look, many marriages are falling apart because the two parties have forgotten that we are all selfish by birth. Because when there was ejaculation and there was fertilization of the ovum, the sperm that produced you had to fight off others to gain access. So from day one, we have been selfish. <laughs> Are you here? So marriage is actually entered into by two selfish individuals who must learn to be selfless. Otherwise, the marriage won't work. Look, anytime you see a couple being selfish and selfish, the marriage will never work. No amount of prayer can save that marriage. Because the two people must behave as though they are dead. So young men and women, don't be selfish. Selfish people are self-centered. They are self-important and they assert themselves because it is them. And I put into bracket pride. Pride there is a definition God gave me one time in my devotion. Prioritizing royal eye, demeaning everyone. Prioritizing royal eye, demeaning everyone. You look down upon everybody and you think you are the best thing that ever happened. The individuals, you want to marry them, they will fight you to hell. They will tell you, mm -hmm. they have a class, they have a status. I pray that none of you here is proud. In Jesus' name. Number three, suspicion. It's destroying a lot of marriages. The story that I read about the woman who was expecting to reach the husband and the, call, the son to call. Why would she slap the husband? Simply because the son said a woman called three times. A woman picked the call three times. Uh, oh, no, no. Ujavu. As I say. When I was in Sectech, we had a guy in our dorm. Anytime he slept, his eyes were open. He's asleep, but his eyes were open. Isn't it dangerous? <laughs> I was told that those people, when they die, they put super glue on their eyes to keep it closed. There are individuals who are in relationships and marriages, they can't close their eyes because Chale Akwa Wuda or the Sulia. Why is it so? It's because suspicion. What you did last time is still influencing how I think about you. So you put your phone down, then your spouse will pick it and go and hide in the toilet. She's growing through, looking through. I had a story of a man whose wife used his thumbprint to open his phone when he was asleep. And the woman ran to the toilet, 2 a.m., and was scrolling through and downloading stuff and sending emails. So the man in the middle of the night just woke up. And do you know what he said? Hey, my phone no way. <laughs> his wife was not there. He didn't see that his wife was not there. He was looking for his phone. <laughs> hey, my phone no way. Where is my phone? Why would he be looking for his phone and not his wife who was not there? Because there's something on the phone. <laughs> May God spare you that kind of suspicion. Some of you have been deceived by men or women. And so it becomes a suspicion that drives you. You go into marriage and you have the suspicion. You can't trust anybody except yourself. That is dangerous. Because marriages are built on trust. And if I can't trust you, how do I marry you? Number four, seared conscience. There are individuals who have lost conscience about what is right and what is wrong. So you see him or her doing what is wrong. And it's as if it's a new normal. And this is hurting marriages. Mama Rosie and I were discussing how a married man can look at a young girl 
and say, Oh, yeah, my no. Hey, how? You are married. You should be happy with your marriage. Why are you calling me at night? And some of you girls, do you like it? Anaju yede. I don't know what is in Anaju. Ah, Eman yede. I was reading one celebrity, so-called celebrity. And she was saying that going out with married men is the best. Hey! And some of these girls will come and sit on TV, on radio, and they talk loud. And some of you, they have become your role models. I pray in the name of Jesus, let the light of the Lord shine through your eyes. And let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. All your nature refined until his beauty is seen in you. I want to look like Jesus. I don't want to look like my father. I don't want to look like anybody. I want to look like Jesus. Who do you want to look like? Some of you want to be like Michael Jackson, Shakira, C. Rona. So you go and buy a Bruni way, then you ride behind the C. Rona. Hey, Rona, Rona. Hey, hey, yeah, Rona. Hey, hey. You have to be like Jesus. Some say they want to be like Satan. Who do you want to look like? Becca. Ephia. Ephia Odo. That's what you want to look like. You want to look like Shatawale. Stone Boy. When would you look like Jesus? I want to look like Jesus. And tell yourself, I want to be like Jesus in my generation. Oh, I can hear you, church. The fifth thing which is hurting marriages is what I call split personality. A person who is two. They have a life in church which is different from the life in the house. The life they have in church is different from the life they have in the office. Are you double? I went to an office and I said that I have a church member here. And when I entered and I was chatting with the girls, one of them said, Elder, we so come as or any bee. I said, Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, sorry about I said, Hey! And you move, Juma. I was shocked. And this is a girl I'm boasting of. And then I decided to pass through her office because she's there. Me too, I'm going to show my member is here. What's up? Me free on another dance here, Nasa. The testimony was gone. Because the people were amazed that this girl too is in your church. In fact, about seven years ago, a guy came to our place as a visitor. And when I saw, I know the guy to be a Casanova. You know a Casanova? A player. Hanky Panky. And I said, hey. Now, and then what about, sorry. I said, oh, my name is Adam I said, who is she? Or he? Or so he said, she. I said, yeah. I call with your... Hey! <laughs> because as for him, his protocol is that once I get you as a girl, back in the ground. And indeed, he was telling me that is his new girlfriend. And I didn't have a sorry. Are you the same person we see right now in church? Or you have another face we don't know? In Ruth chapter 1, from verse 16 to 19, we read these words. And listen very carefully. And treat me not to leave you, or turn back from following after you. And then he says, For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, your God, my God. Where you will die, I will die, and there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death part you and me. 
verse 18, when she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. I pray to God that each one of you as young people first must understand this. He says, don't stop me from following after you. In marriage, we follow each other without letting go. Get ready to enjoy marriage. Amen. Amen. Number two, he says, where you go, there I will also go. I call it monodirectional movement. When you have a marriage where one is going right and the other is going left, there is division already. Our heart should be one, our mind must be one, our decisions must be jointly owned. Prepare your heart for somebody who can do that with you. Number three, it says, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. When you marry, you should be able to come with your husband or wife into the midst of the people of God and they must feel comfortable. When they come in our midst and they look like strangers, it's an issue. When they cannot say your God is my God, there is an issue. Then he went further. He said, where you die, there I will die. And where you are buried, there I want to be buried. In other words, we are going the long hog. We are going for the long haul as well because we are determined to do this together. I saw it in my father and mother. When my father died three weeks, my mom also died, and I buried both of them together. I laid them on one bed as husband and wife. It was amazing. One woman came to me and said, Elder, the first time I saw this was 60 years ago. At that time, I was only 16 years. And this is the second one I'm seeing. I pray that you should marry somebody who will be willing to die for you. Die for you. Now, there are some people, they don't want to die for their spouses. Men I mean, you, you, you must die for your spouse. I'm determined to die for my wife. I was watching a video that a friend sent to me recently. A father who was on his phone. He was playing with his phone. Then all of a sudden, he saw one of his children in a baby's cot. About to tumble over from the cot. Then the man dropped the phone and jumped and held the baby. Because human beings are more precious than phone. I pray that you marry somebody who will be ready to die for you. If they are not ready to die for you, then it's not worth it. The young men, all the young men, stand up, let me see you. If you're a male and you know you are a male, you have not forgotten you're a male. Sometimes when you go to meetings and you say men stand, some of the people, they don't see themselves as males. They get confused. Lift up your right hand with me. Make a declaration. Lift up your right hand. Yes. And say this. Say something that God, this particular thing, I don't want it in my life as a young man. When I become a husband, I don't want this thing. What is it that you don't want? Say it. Pray to God. Some of you have to say, God, I don't want to beat my wife. I don't want to be cheating on my wife. Some of you, that's a prayer you should pray. Because your father has plenty of children. He can't even remember their names. Some of you, your father was a tanker driver. Every station he went, he had a child there. And say an amen to that. You can take your seat. The young ladies, be on your feet. Some of the young girls today, they have turned themselves into access bank. All you need is an ATM. You swipe it. And bingo, a dim, yopo. One young girl went to visit a guy and said, Jim, 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 I give myself away. Hey, Jim, I give myself away. Jim, 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 Jim. My life is not my own, Jim, 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 Jim. To you, I belong. Jim, I give myself, I give myself to you. Hey! 
This body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in it. Some girls on Nam, Ubindi Midra, what on them? What on them? And I want you to lift your right hand, place it on your chest. Women like their heart. Speak to your heart at this moment. Speak to your heart. Tell your heart something. That God, I want to be a noble woman. I want to be a wise woman. I want to be a woman of distinction. And say an amen to that. Please be seated. Now the young men who are here who want to be husband tomorrow, let's see you. You want to be a good husband. Let me see your hand. I'm not saying tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow in the future. We have tomorrow, tomorrow. And we have tomorrow in the future. I'm talking about tomorrow in the future. Let's see your hand. You want to be a good husband. Let me see your hand. Now there is one person who is your papa. Your hand is down. One person who is your hand is down. Which one do we attribute to you? <laughs> Thank you. Now listen to me as I close. Number one, say husband. How do you spell husband? H. My daughters, I should never say H. H. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I do. Probably, probably primary school. You see, H. Everybody say after me, H. My daughters, I should say H. <laughs> and also, baby, if you know, also for minimal. The first thing is that you must be a help to your wife. If, if you are here and you say to yourself, if you go to the kitchen, you are not a man, indeed you are not a man. Good men also go to the kitchen. Did you hear what the mother said? Three days today, I had finished eating, my daughters were there, I took my plate straight to the um, kitchen and washed it. As soon as I sat down, I got a call from a lady. Elder, elder, me the old two speaker. Me kuno ha, ya pesi ya ka asembi. I said, okay. Then the husband said, elder, oh, oh. I said, yes. Elder, he said, me pa asantini bema. Na me yiri kachire me se minko chuchung. And chance him. So as soon as he said it, I said, oh, bro. Na uya asantini ana uye kristoni. Also, I'm a Christian, but I'm a Santé. Then I said to him, my brother, you will not lose your Asante manless if you go and wash your plates. But I said to the wife, you two, don't tell your husband, because both of them are not wise. And then I said to him, listen, with all that you hear of me, I have just finished eating. My wife is there. My daughters are there. I took my plates, two plates, to the kitchen and washed it and put it in the drainer and came to sit down. This is when your call came. It has never changed me as the head of my home. I tell you, young men, let me give you a secret. The most romantic place for a woman is not the bedroom, it's the kitchen. Any man who knows how to go to the kitchen and handle himself in the kitchen, he always has bonus. Bonus. But the men who don't go to the kitchen, they are watching Chelsea and Manchester. Cross your leg. Chelsea, oh, go, go, oh, go. Ay! That eye, you should have gone to the kitchen to cut some tomatoes, grind some pepper, stand by your wife and say, oh, boy, Juma, oh, boy, Juma, oh, boy, Juma, oh, boy, Juma. Are we together? The second thing is that the husband shows understanding of the times. As a man, you must know the times in which you live. Women operate by seasons. There are some seasons you can't shout or raise your voice with a woman. You have to talk undertone. But women operate by cycles and seasons. It can be very complex. Number three, you must be the spiritual head of your clan. That is your family. And so you, the young boys here, ensure that spiritually you are deep. Build your spirituality. Build your spirituality. And then a husband is businesslike. 
you don't just do things anyway, anyhow. You must operate like a businessman. You have a businessman here. Ask him how many hours he sleeps. I went to a conference and I met a uh, physicist from China, a Chinese physicist. He works with a nuclear uh, department in China and he says for 40 years he sleeps four hours. And he said that anybody who sleeps more than four hours is a lazy person. I said, yeah. In fact, that guy challenged my thinking. Because I grew up knowing that adults need at least six hours. And children need eight hours. And this Chinese guy challenged me to understand that, Charlie, you can't sleep, sao. And some of the young men, all you do is you sleep, sao. If you want to be a husband, you've got to be businesslike. You must also be available to nourish and cherish your wife. If tomorrow your wife is looking for you and she can't find you, women, they are like plants. The more you water, the better they look. And if you deny them of water, they dry up. And when they dry up, they make a lot of noise. They begin to chook you. They will stress you. A chuku chuku. A wo wo wo. A wo so wo so. I know men who cannot go home. Because see, women, they are multipliers. If you give her anger, she will give you shock. If you give her pain, she will give you frustration. Look, if you make a woman sleepless, she will make sure you have a nightmares. Who they will need me So, back as a better day, wa. Walla, walla. And so you've got to understand that you have to nurture and nourish your wife. Young men, when you marry a woman, take good care of her. Dress her. Make her look good. In Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. Because we have some men, all they know is to remove. They don't know how to replace. Replace it in Jesus' name. Oh, I mean, oh, somebody say, and I'm into this one. <laughs> the next one is that every husband is a natural of the next generation. Everything I'm doing, some boy is looking at me. One day I was walking in our estate. As I was moving, I felt like somebody was following me. When I turned, there was a little boy called Kweku. I said, Kweku, I had a. I said, that I'm going to I was like, what? It reminded me of what John Maxwell said. If you're walking and nobody is following you, you are just taking a walk. But a leader is somebody, someone is following. And finally, you must be dedicated to Christ. Look, Bodama Jesus. The ladies, they are not just looking for men who know how to have sex. They are looking for men who love Jesus. Let me close with the wives. How many ladies want to be good wives here? You want to be good wives? The first sign of a good wife, please put the wife one on, on the screen. The first thing is that you must be wise and worthy. Look, sisters, don't sell yourself cheap. Today, some girls, even fried rice is more expensive than them. All you need is to give them fried rice or check check. You know check check. You know that check check, the mayonnaise rice. Quick fix. Some want a mobile phone. Woman. <laughs> One girl, she said, Elder, I'll see your door, me. <laughs> hey, I'll see your door. Then I ask her, How do you know, sir? Oh, don't know. I said, Me who na me nyan goose bumps. Me who na, I research him, Mr. Elder. Me say, Me who na nyu nyu nyu. I said, Hey, sister. Or be bawashi. Or be bawashi. How can you use goose bumps as a sign of love? We need wise women in this house, in Jesus' name. We need women of worth. You, you get, carry yourself well. There's a difference between worthiness and pride. They are not the same. Number two, we need women who have insight. They know this is kotoeni. And their insight will inspire you. Look, some men are looking for inspiration from their wives. Look, men have their fears. So me, I have my fear. If I tell you I was injured in January on the 10th, would you believe it? I hit my jaw here to a covert. I slipped and hit it. 
When they did the x-rays, they said they were going to put wire in my jaw. And for six months, I can't open my mouth. I was afraid. I called my wife and said, this is the diagnosis. They said, you should go and see maxillofacial specialist. I had never heard some before. When I looked at the procedure they were going to do, inside my jaw, they were going to put wire. And you won't speak for six months. I was shaking. My wife looked at me and said, I told me, you say, one better also. My wife is such a lady of tremendous faith. And she held my hands and said, you won't go through this procedure. I said, oh, yeah, sure. Now we're a doctor. And in fact, when I was referred to the senior most guy, he looked at the thing and said, Elder, you don't need a fanciful surgery. I will fix it for you in a way that won't give you crisis. And then I'm doing a TNTM, yo. My wife's faith inspired me and I'm standing on my feet. Right now, look for a woman who will inspire you. And your bow is Bema Church, Bema. That is Jezebel. That is Herodias. Bema Bena, oh, you wanna, I bought all your talk, to be, to be also. Me, me, kuno. Number three, a fruitful and a faithful friend. Marry a woman who will be your friend. You can think with her, you can struggle with her, you can dream with her, and you can grow with her. And finally, you need a woman who is an entrepreneur, a woman who is enterprising. Oh, my own mocker. They will not run you aground. Some women, they are consumers. Everything which is passing, she will buy. Even the things she doesn't need, she will buy. So women can buy her. Their wardrobe is spilling over. We see that they are coming to church. I leave you with this. May the Lord be with you. So that when I see you, your marriage will be working. In Jesus' name.